Hey, Jeff here. So I have uh, one new piece of vinyl to show. And then I uh, received a CD in that made me start thinking. And so we're going to look at what I have in my collection that I consider to be some of the most in-your-face, uh, cutting, uh, some people might say obnoxious. I don't know if that's a good word. Anyway, lyrical content that uh, is really bold and in your face for the views that they're representing but anyway before we get to that real quick one piece of vinyl Kennedy now I've mentioned the name before Carl Kennedy is a drummer and he was uh, with the rods back in the 80s and on into the years has also been his name has been involved in producing tons and tons of great bands he's one of the ones I mentioned many videos ago where I bought an album almost based solely on the fact that he produced it anything he's put his hand on I'm probably gonna like he tends to stick with you know metallic type hard rock metal type bands and over the years he's produced quite a few things that I own and again I look for his name anywhere I see it well anyway I noticed that he has a new he had a new band I uh, saw this online many months ago and pre-ordered it, and it finally arrived. And uh, yeah, so he's the drummer, and then like I say, it's just, uh, I, it's a powerful, hard rocking metallic album. I have uh, they, I bought it from Amazon, and they did send me the digital tracks almost immediately. So I've had those for a couple months. And I've listened to it, and I really liked it. I, I thought it was just a, it was a good release. But when I got it in, on vinyl and put it on the other day and cranked it up, more power, more power just comes forward. And Carl hasn't lost an ounce of anything. His drumming on here is probably the best I've heard on any release, it seems like. He's just on fire at times. So, yeah, if you get a chance, it's uh, here's the band, as you can see like me it's uh oh, let me see if I can get this glare off of here so yes check it out go online it's just if you like hard hard rock and roll it's really good you know great uh, powerful vocals and everything so the other thing I got in now this is where we're going to convert over to CDs so I got this CD in uh yesterday yesterday yeah because holiday on Monday and so I didn't know, as, as I was listening to it and having this officially now on CD, I started thinking about bands like this. And I thought, you know, I have a couple in my collection like that. They kind of stand out because it's not necessarily the style that I'm most, you know, uh, involved in, which obviously is more of a melodic and classic metal type sound. But it's one of those bands that back in the day was a novelty, and then you just kind of grow to love them. And what I'm talking about is 8-Ball Colos, or however you pronounce that. I'm sure it's got some more of a Spanish twist to it. So this was just reissued by Rocks Records. And this is a 1996 release. And I would classify it as, um, it's got a punk edge to it. And I don't listen to a ton of punk. And obviously punk is known... In general, the genre of punk is known for being a little more in your face lyrically, and that is what you get here. Now, it does have lots of shredding metal guitars feeling throughout it, uh, drum machine for the most part programming. It's got that electronic, you know, drum feel, but then it's got this shredding guitar. So, Tracy G is the guitar player for this band. Tracy G went on to be in other bands, he played with Dio. That's the most notable, I guess, that people are aware of him in. Uh, I know he's working with somebody right now that I've heard one track off of uh, that it sounds really good, and I'm hoping that's going to be coming out soon. I'm not going to release that because it was sent to me uh, kind of on a hush down low. But, uh, yes, shredding guitar. And then you got this singer, Burrito uh, David, who is uh, yelling and sp just spouting out these uh I would say kind of harsh lyrics because it's really in your face. Again, it's what you would expect with the punk type band. Um, and so they attack things like the, uh, the, you can see it's called Satan's Whore. So yes, uh, definitely is a religious bent to it. They attack the establishment church and hypocrisy in the church. Uh, 
they go through all kinds of stuff. Predators in the pulpit. Uh, so it, it goes into just a lot of that stuff in your face against uh, organized religion in a sense that the hypocrisy of it. Now, this particular version, I want to open this carefully. I got the two disc edition, which has a bonus disc. So it also has this cool little <laughs> coaster. I don't know why they give you these things because who's going to use this? I am not going to put this on my desk and use that as a coaster. I'm a collector and obviously I'm going to collect this. So now I've got something else I have to keep a collection of. Like I'm going to use it for a coaster. Anyway, bonus disc is a disc by The Warning. And it has a demo on it that they had totally even forgot existed. That uh, I'm assuming it's not dated on here, but I assume that that particular demo called the Struggle Within demo was released in 1995. Because in the very beginning of the thing, he says, uh, The warning, 1995, we're back, or something. Because the warning, now I mentioned the warning, let me switch over to them. Because a couple months ago, Rocks Records also released, reissued all of the recordings by the warning. Basically, the same band with a different name. It's still got the same singer, still got Tracy, Tracy G. This is 86, uh, 85, 86, and 87. Three demos. This is where it started, and this is where I discovered them in the early days. And again, the lyrical content is the same. Uh, production is probably a little lower quality. This is probably back in the days when everybody was using a four-track <laughs> cassettes. These were cassettes back in the day. Uh, we had them all. And so they have uh, Repent or Die. Uh, the, one of the tapes, the 86 tape, is The Virgin in the Midst of Whores. And if you the album cover, which I won't show on here, it's, it's in there. It had a lot of the religious leaders at the time holding a crucified Jesus. So again, they're attacking the established church and the hypocrisy and the, and the faith leaders and the people who are leading people astray. And then Cut the Crap was 1987. And again... A lot of the same stuff so this came out now when this was released i also bought the double disc this came with a sticker not a coaster and this has the moral majority which is essentially the same singer with a different band before they did the warning so what we have with this which is i think great and i had to have both is you've got the original three by the warning plus a bonus cd of stuff prior to the warning and then you've got the eight ball stuff with a demo for the warning that was discovered later that now puts together to have all four warning demos and i've never heard this warning demo before now the it also has a live show on here which is nice too so we have an extra bonus disc there now when i got to thinking okay these bands like this this is one of the bands that again these were really back in the day when these came out in the 80s i was listening to everything with hair and chains and, and metal so this stood out as being very different but you you kind of grew to love it after time i missed out on this in the 90s but i picked this up in the early 2000s when it was reissued it was attempted to be reissued and it kind of fell through but they had sold about 50 pre-orders or less and so they went ahead and made up about 50 cdrs pretty high quality cdrs of this and sent it out to those people so i do have a very very limited edition version of that now it's come back it's been re uh, remastered by Rob Caldwell it's you know it sounds great and of course we've got uh, better artwork and we've got a bonus disc in there so I'm thinking back bands like that and two jump to mind one in particular let me find this is our newest album band called lust control again punk type band really in your face against uh, things like sexual sexual promiscuity and uh, they deal with abortion. They deal with all kinds of topics that people struggle with when it comes to uh, sexual purity, things along that line. They go into a lot of different areas. Uh, this one is their most recent and actually probably feels like more of a real official release in the sense that, hey, let's go in the studio and actually re spend some time and money recording a real album. And I mean, they've done it in the past, but I'll show you what I mean in a minute. This came out in 2013, and it uh, was a couple years after that campaign fundraiser release on, uh, on Pink Vinyl, which I have a copy of that. Before that, they had... 
this fun fun feeling now this was go into the studio and re-record some of our old demo tracks and put them out so this was an official in the studio type thing but what we have in the prior to that are a bunch of demos again in the 80s probably four track recordings you know low budget just but in your face uh aggressive type lyrics on topics that people struggle with so you have most all the demos here the, the songs that are not on here they re-recorded and put on here then this was released by rocks records just recently a couple years ago this is their third ep again you can see this is the 80s this is the day or the maybe even the early 90s for this one when that you know they were just in your face about social issues of the time so great stuff limited edition pressing yeah, so we got basically these, which incorporate all of their demos, plus some live stuff, plus some bonus stuff. And then we've got this, like I say, which is more of a let's go years later, years later in the studio and record an album. The only other thing that has really come in recently is a new uh, tourniquet album. And it's not, I, I honestly, when I first ordered it i never didn't really look at it real closely it was like oh something new from tourniquet boom pre-order and go kind of maybe i assumed at the time it was a new tourniquet album but it turns out it's more of a compilation though there is a new song on here so that's cool but i i it's kind of a compilation of it's more focused on like the doom uh psychedelic doom type sound and so they've picked out songs from each of their albums that have that feeling put them together here it's great to hear them all together like that and you've got the diversity uh of various singers over their time frame but like i said there is a at least there is a new song on here and a song on here that i did not have from uh that was released as a different setup so yeah this came in and that is uh something i just failed to show that is about it one record and a handful of cds and so what maybe this would be a good little thread idea if you watch this far and you hear this part see if you want to jump on it what's some of the most uh in your face bold for a cause uh aggressive uh obnoxious <laughs> lyrics band with lyrics that you have in your collection why don't you show us a couple might be a fun little thread take a look what do you got in there anyway that is all for now. I will see you later. Rock on.